hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel hit the subscribe button because you will find my videos both intriguing and interesting tap the like button and feel free to be part of this conversation by simply sharing your thoughts on what you think about this video now today we're going to look into a powerful conversation sparked by a black man who challenges us to confront a deeply rooted issue self-hate within the black community now he draws connections to historical narratives biblical interpretations and everyday language that subtly perpetuate negative stereotypes so let's open our minds and hearts to this discussion have you ever considered how language imagery and historical beliefs shape our perceptions of ourselves and others how might these subtle influences impact our self-worth and hinder our collective progress so join me in exploring these questions as we unpack the complexities of identity challenging the narratives that have shaped our mindset your thoughts and experiences are invaluable so let's engage in a conversation that goes beyond the surface are you ready for this let's get into the video most of the time as black people we hate ourselves and unless we deal with that hatred among us black people we cannot achieve anything you can become a scientist you can become a historian you can become successful you can become only successful to a limit where everybody is trying to pull you down but why do we hate ourselves because we were told in the bible that we were cursed haven't you heard that the curse of harm that we were cursed are the sons of harm and yet cursed in the bible Noah, who was a drunkard, cast Canaan. He didn't cast, uh, he cast one son of black people, but not all, because Noah was also a black person, according to the Bible. And, you know, hopefully we'll come, you know, and cover this. So, we hate ourselves. And even in everyday language, if I want to cheat you, I blackmail you. If I want to put you on a bad list, I blacklist you in a what book? In a black book. Haven't you heard that? That will put you in a black book. Teachers used to have black books. Do they still have them? Yeah? Change their name. Call them white books or, you know, danger books. Now, if it is a bad spot on the road, it is called a white spot on the road. A black spot. If it is a bad trading day, it is called a black day. If it is in a legal market, it is called a what market? A black market. Which means if there are black people in the market, then the market is illegal. You are not supposed to trade. Yeah? <laughs> As long as you see black people, it's illegal. You know? So, we wear black for funerals. And when we wear mosquito nets for weddings, what color are they? <laughs> so, when you wear white for weddings, and you wear what color for funerals? Black. Now, in your homes, the pictures of God that you have is what color? Be honest. Tell the truth and shame the man. What color are the pictures on the wall in your homes? White. And what color then is the devil? So here of you, I have fought the devil, won't I? Is that not, does it make sense? If I am a Christian, and they say onward Christian soldiers, eh? if I am a soldier of Christ, my job is to fight the devil. What does the devil look like? Isn't it black? When you go in a military college, the sabao, when you are learning, eh? the target practice is what kind of head? It's a black head. So it is no wonder that black people hate themselves. Because every time you see God, you are not thinking of your sister or your mother or your uncle. You are not thinking of Kiurankuba as looking like God. No, you are thinking that somebody else, not you, looks like God and you look like the devil. And most of the time, if I look like the devil, I am told I'm a devil, then I act like a devil. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint people. People thinking that, uh, you know, I'm a wonderful person. You know, they've well, let me try to live up to the path. That's what psychology says. But I'm here to tell you today, number one, that when God created the world, there were no people at all. There were no Chinese. 
They were no, no Indians. They were no Italians, no Romans, no Germans, no Poles, no Finns, no Swedes, no Goths, no Vandals, no Vifgos, no Vikings. They were only black people. Only black people. They were probably at the time darker than you. So, if you read any sacred text and it says that you are created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, it means God is what color? Black. And any time anybody gives you a God who doesn't look like you, you give him that God back. You say, you know what? Yeah, your God looks okay, but just take him. Because at the dawn of time, there were no other people on earth but us. None. And you know, the most interesting story is that that story unfolded around this river that passes it through, through your district. The Nile. That is where humanity began. To the extent that UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific Committee Organization, in volume 2, chapter 1, it says as a result of the work of Professor Like and other subsequent work, it leads us to conclude that more than 150,000 years ago, beings morphologically identical with the man of today were living in the area of the Great Lakes at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the Nile, in the land of the gods, and nowhere else. UNESCO, nowhere else. Humanity went through five stages. The first stages are known as Australopithecine, black. Where were they living? Where you are living? How old? How long ago? 5.5 million years ago. Who was living in Europe at that time? No one. Who was living in Asia at that time? No one. Who was living in America North? None. America South? None. Bismarck Archipelago? No one. Australia? Tonga? None. Haiti, Fiji, Samoa, who was living there? No one. Humanity was only here. 3.5 million years ago, Homo habilis. Where was he living? Here. Was he living elsewhere? No. 1.5 million years. Humanity at the stage of Homo erectus, the African that walks upright. Where is he living? Here. He lives here to populate the world. He passes through the Gulf of Eden, avoids Saudi Arabia, crosses into India. And then he goes through Kenya, Nijikenda, Tayar in Australia, and populates all the islands in between. Avoids Israel, avoids Jordan, avoids Syria. He also discovers fire. Then 150,000 years, modern man, known as Homo sapien, Homo sapien. The oldest Homo sapien, the bones discovered in Homo Valley in Ethiopia and Kenya. He started where? Here. Then he moves with his feet and his cows, mobile food, and his language, articulated symbolic language, and his brain, a big cranium, and he populates Europe. He is the first person to populate Europe about um, 40,000 years ago, known as Gromordi. The first people to populate Europe were black people. They were known as Gromordi. First people to populate England were black people. They were known as Bika. First people to populate India were black people. They were known as Dravidians. First people to populate Japan, black people. They were known as Masaba Negroes. Mulembe, Kamaku, Wagasile, they came from here. They populated Japan. That's why Japanese names are like Uganda names. Takahara, Nakamura, Kato, Toyota, all those. Because the first Japanese were black people. In ancient time, the whole world belonged to the black man, the black woman. You are the people that populated the world. You are the people that gave birth to everybody else. 
and quite significantly. And I am telling you this as a scholar. I have a library of 32,000 books. I have read each one of them. Not only read them, but remember them. I have traveled in almost every corner of the world, lectured at the most prestigious universities. I am telling you that in ancient time, the old, the hundred people who are on earth were you and your ancestors. You. And you are also the people of the scriptures. All scripture, be it the Rigvit Veda, the Nama Pali, the Peran Peru, the Papyrus of Ani, the Papyrus of Hunefa, the Quran, the Bible, the Book of the Rosta, the Epic of Gilgamesh, is all about black people. Black people. But I know you have not heard about this information. Why? Because people colonize the world, they also colonize the information about the world. Now, thank you for joining the conversation. After exploring the insightful video together, it's clear that the, the impact of language, historical narratives, and cultural representations runs deep. Now, let's reflect on how these influences shape our daily lives. Have you observed instances where language subtly reinforces stereotypes? How about representations of good and evil? with white symbolizing purity and black carrying negative connotations. Now, as we navigate these nuances, consider the effects on self-perception and interpersonal relationships within the black community. Let's dig deep into personal experiences. Have you ever felt the weight of these influences in your own life? How do you think addressing these ingrained beliefs can contribute to collective empowerment and success? Share your thoughts, stories, and perspectives. Your voice adds depth to this crucial dialogue. So to Together, let's continue to unravel the layers of self-love, identity, and progress. As we continue this exploration, consider the broader impact on mental health and well-being. How might these ingrained biases contribute to internalized struggles and hinder personal growth? Reflect on the notion of the case of harm and its historical implications. How has this narrative affected generations and influenced societal attitudes? Moreover, let's delve into the power of representation. How do images of a palm-colored god and a black devil contribute to shaping perceptions and in our everyday language how can seemingly innocuous phrases like blackmail or blacklist carry deeper subconscious meanings by sharing our experiences and perspectives we contribute to dismantling these harmful narratives so join the conversation by shedding light on ways we can collectively challenge these ingrained beliefs and foster a culture of self-love understanding and unity your insights are crucial as we navigate the path towards positive change we need to explore the impact of systemic artism and how it intersects with these ingrained beliefs how have historical injustices contributed to the perpetuation of negative stereotypes and how do they manifest in various aspects of our lives. Consider the role of education and media in shaping perceptions. How can we work towards more inclusive and accurate representations that celebrate the diversity within the black community? Let's ponder the importance of cultural reclamation, embracing our roots, heritage, and achievements to counteract the damaging narratives. In moving forward, let's discuss actionable steps. How can individuals, communities, and institutions challenge these biases collectively? And importantly, how can we foster a sense of pride and self-love within the black community? We need to shine a light on the economic implications of these ingrained biases. How might stereotypes influence employment opportunities, career advancement, and economic disparities within the black community? Moreover, think about the role of allyship in dismantling systemic biases. How can individuals from different backgrounds actively contribute to breaking down these ingrained beliefs and fostering a more inclusive society? As we untangle these threads, consider the importance of self-awareness and introspection. How can acknowledging and addressing these biases on an individual level contribute to a broader societal change? Now, these biases deeply ingrained in language, historical narratives, and cultural representations have had profound effects on the Black community. Here are some ways these biases have impacted self-esteem and identity. The constant exposure to negative stereotypes and associations with terms like blackmail or blacklist may contribute to lower self-esteem and a distorted sense of identity within the black community. Mental health, internalizing negative stereotypes and experiencing systemic artism has led to heightened stress, anxiety, 
and mental health challenges. The burden of historical injustices and biases has contributed to mental health disparities. Economic disparities. Biases may influence employment opportunities, salary discrepancies, and hinder career advancement for individuals within the black community. This economic impact perpetuates disparities and limits financial mobility. Educational opportunities. Biases have affected educational experiences, limiting access to, to quality education and opportunities for academic advancement. This in turn has long-term consequences on career trajectories. Healthcare disparities. Biases has contributed to healthcare disparities, affecting access to quality healthcare and leading to disparities in health outcomes within the black community. Criminal justice system. Biases may play a role in racial profiling and discriminatory practices within the criminal justice system, contributing to disparities in arrests, sentencing, and incarceration rates. Political representation. They influence perceptions of leadership capabilities, impacting political representation. The underrepresentation of the black community in political offices may result from systemic biases. Media portrayals. Negative stereotypes perpetuated in media has shaped public opinion, influencing perceptions of the black community and contributing to stereotypes that have affected various aspects of life. Generational trauma. The historical roots of biases such as the curse of harm contribute to generational trauma. The weight of past injustices can be carried through generations, affecting familial and community dynamics, microaggressions and everyday experiences. Constant exposure to microaggressions, to expressions and bias and everyday artism can create a hostile and unwelcoming environment. These experiences, though often subtle, accumulate and contribute to stress and mental health challenges. Community trust and relationships. Biases can erode trust between the black community and institutions such as law enforcement, health care, and education. This lack of trust can hinder effective collaboration and exhibit existing disparities, limited opportunities for cultural expression. They may limit opportunities for the celebration and promotion of diverse black cultures. Cultural contributions are sometimes overlooked or appropriated when forcing stereotypes. Entrepreneurial opportunities. Systemic biases can impact entrepreneurial opportunities within the black community. Access to funding, resources, and business support may be disproportionately affected, limiting economic empowerment intersectionality. Biases intersect with other aspects of identity such as gender, social orientation, and social economic status, creating unique challenges for individuals within the black community who navigate multiple layers of discrimination. We have come to the end of the video. What do you, my viewers, have to say about this? Share your comments in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.